it is, it has become kind of an article of faith in the American media that the current insanity of the Republican Party is being driven by Donald Trump. That down in Texas, when the Republicans got uh, buffaloed by the, by the Democrats, uh, refusing a quorum, um, I'll just very briefly explain this. Uh, we have the same situation here in, in uh, Oregon. Uh, you have to have a quorum. The quorum is set, I, I believe, as uh, two-thirds. Uh, sometimes there's 60 percent, sometimes there's 70 percent, whatever. The, you know, the, the quorum requirement can be established. Sometimes there's 50 percent can be established or typically is established in the Constitution or as law. And what a quorum means is there's enough people now present that we can do business. If we don't have a quorum, if we don't have enough people present to do business, then we can't vote on anything. We can't do business. And so the Democrats, and, and what's happened here in Oregon now for two years in a row, is that whenever the Democrats want to pass a particular piece of legislation, that they have plenty of votes to pass. Democrats have major majorities in the House and Senate here in Oregon. The Republicans just walk out. In some cases, they even leave the state. They hide. And, you know, the result of that is that legislation that Republicans don't like doesn't get passed. So this has been going on for a couple of years here in Oregon. So now it's, this is what happened in Texas over the weekend. The Republicans pro proposed a law that said, we can pick a district, let's say a black part of Houston, and we can decide that we're going to cut in half the number of uh, voting polling places. And in those polling places, we're going to cut in half the number of voting machines. So the lines are going to go from three hours to 10 hours. And then, if you're still in line at 9 p.m., and that line may stretch for, you know, four or five hours worth of voting, you can't vote after 9 p.m. So first, we're going to create long lines. And then secondly, we're going to say to people who are still in line at 9 p.m., sorry, you can't vote. It just is not, not going to happen. And the Republicans are trying to pass this law that would also criminalize a lot of other behavior, uh, you know, like signing your, uh, signing your voter, uh, your ballot uh, illegibly. And I mean, it was, just, it was just bizarre. Throwing criminal penalties for poll workers, for uh, voters, and for people who are working to, to get out the vote, putting criminal penalties in all three of those categories. And the Republicans had the votes to pass it. But the Democrats walked out and they said, we're going to deny you a quorum. Okay, so that's what happened. Now, the narrative around this is that that's happening because of Donald Trump's big lie that he actually won the 2020 election and that, you know, even Republicans in Texas and in Georgia and Arizona are lying to you uh, that, uh, that Joe Biden won. In fact, what the Republican Party is doing right now, they may do, be doing maybe a little more rapidly and a little more enthusiastically with a boost from Donald Trump. Because Trump wants this stuff in place for 2024 so he can run for president again. And frankly, Josh Hawley, Tom Cotton, Rick Scott, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, any other right-wing fascist who wants to run for president in 2024. They want it in place, too, just in case they lose the election, but want to be able to claim that they won the election. See, pretty straightforward stuff, right? So the narrative in the media is that this is all Trump, that uh, Trump is the one who caused this. And we need to blow that narrative up. Eric Bullard is uh, writing about this. Uh, He's got a great newsletter, by the way. It's called Press Run, and uh, you can easily find it. You know, it's a, it's a subscription newsletter. There's a free version and a paid version. And, and he writes, this grip narrative is nonsense, and it needs to stop. The Republican Party no longer adheres to the tenets of democracy. It is determined to per permanently wound free and fair elections. Republicans are doing this because they want to, not because they're quivering at the sight of Trump, writes Eric Bowler. Emphasizing the idea that fear of Trump risk is motivating Republicans, 
risks misleading people about the true nature of the threat posed by the Republican Party's ongoing radicalization. Now, this is not an idea that Eric Bollert first came up with. First of all, it's simple reality, and you can just look around and see that ever since the Reagan Revolution, Republicans have been working to defeat democracy. In fact, you could even go back to the Nixon election and see that this has been, you know, an effort to defeat democracy. Um, uh, I mean, this is, this is, I don't think, I don't know if I've got my LBJ clip here. I don't think I do uh, on my 360. No, I don't. And, and, oh yeah, I do. Here it is. This is, uh, you know, this is 1968. LBJ learning that Richard Nixon is trying to blow up an election by cutting a deal with the South Vietnamese. Hey, if you just, uh, you know, don't go along with LBJ's peace deal, which he had negotiated in August of 1968, which would have helped Hubert Humphrey, the vice president, get elected president. He was running against Richard Nixon in 68. That if the South Vietnamese would go along with that, that Nixon would make them rich, right? And, and the CIA wiretapped this and handed the wiretap off to LBJ, and here's what he had to say to Everett Dirksen, the, le the, the most powerful Republican in America at the time. Here's the latest, latest uh, information we got. The agent says that uh, she's just, they just talked to the boss in New Mexico. Uh -huh. And that he says that you must hold out. Just hold on until after the election. We know what you is saying to them out there. Yeah. We're pretty well informed on both ends. Now, I'm reading their hand, Everett. I don't want to get this in the campaign. That's right. And they oughtn't to be doing this. This is treason. I know. I know. It's treason. So, you know, Republicans have been running this, this scam. I just got uh, Abel Hassan Bonnie Sauter's book yesterday. I had to buy a used copy because it's out of print. I think it's called My Turn to Speak. Bonnie Sauter was the president of Iran in 1980. And his book is about how he, uh, how the, the mullahs, the ayatollahs in Iran had cut a deal with Ronald Reagan and his campaign to hold the American hostages so that Jimmy Carter would lose the election. So you've got Nixon committing treason with a foreign government to win an election. Then you've got Reagan committing treason with a foreign government to win an election. And, you know, I could go on. I'm going to stop at that point because basically what the Republicans are saying now is, you know, we don't need to commit treason with foreign governments. Well, obviously you've got Trump committing treason with a foreign government in 2016 to win an election. But now they're just saying, hey, you know, we don't need to count the votes. So, you know, this law in Texas that would have said, hey, you know, if the line is in 9 p.m. and cut, cuts off, the other provision of the law that nobody is pointing out, or very few people are pointing out, is that election judges could simply say, you know, I think there was some fraud in that black ward over there. We're not going to count their votes. We're just not going to count their votes. We're going to declare the election for the Republican. This law would give them the power to do that with no audit, no proof, no nothing, just, hey, the election judge can say this, and the election judges are appointed Republicans. This is not Donald Trump. This is deeply embedded in the GOP, and it goes back to 1960 friggin' eight. As, as you heard, the president of the United States, Lyndon Johnson at the time, speaking with the, with the leader of the Republicans in the United States Senate, Everett Dirksen. So let's just stop this whole Trump's making the GOP crazy stuff, huh?